going to have the implementation versus aims theory debate, and the overview to this drill is that uh, a large disagreement between affirmatives and negatives on uh, pretty much every debate topic is whether or not the resolution is talking about the implementation of the resolution or it's just talking about whether in general it's a good aim or a good goal. So to make it a little bit more concrete on this autonomous medical decisions topic, the way an implementation app would look is it would offer a specific policy it would pass in order to grant adolescents the autonomous medical decision. And so that policy would open up itself to things like policy politics to SADS, um, because presumably it would take some political capital to get the policy passed, and it would also open itself up to like specific dissads about the economy. Um, compare all that to a world in which the AF does not defend implementation, and it is the general uh, sense of whether or not autonomous decision making uh, should be given to adolescents. In that world, the AF does not defend specific disadvantages to the affirmative. Usually, it can decide to do so, but then it would sort of like ruin the strategic value of making it aim space. Uh, but should the AF stick to its guns in cross-examination and uh, stay, stick to like its aims, not implementation, then uh, that AF would say, in general, philosophically or theoretically or abstractly, it is a good idea for us to grant adolescents the right to make autonomous medical decisions, as opposed to saying, here is the specific method in which I'm going to go about that process. Is that clear enough, Parker? Solid. So, I'm going to read the one end, a theory shell, against an app that was presumably aim space. I'm going to say, you have to defend implementation. And Parker's going to take some prep time and give the one AR, uh, saying that he's allowed to defend aims. When I read the shell, as always, pause your timer, pause the video, or sorry, pause the video, start your timer, give yourself the prep time I give Parker, give a speech, record your speech, compare it to Parker's, see how you do, incorporate feedback, and then redo it just the way Parker will. Are you ready to go? Okay. Interpretation. The affirmative must defend and advocate implementation of autonomous medical decisions within a government system. AF may not advocate autonomous medical decisions as an ideal or aim of government or employers. Violation. You are clearly aim space. Confirmed across examination. First standard is text. World resolved, if world resolved implies a policy. Louisiana House on March 8, 2005. Resolution or legislative instrument used for stating policies uses the term resolved. End quote. Your interpretation is untextual since it doesn't codify the aim or ideal into the laws that government enacts. This means your interpretation is non topical and as such as terminal defense on the AF since it doesn't affirm and re resolve reframes the meaning of other words in the resolution since even if they prescribe an ideal, this word shows that the ideal must be implemented. Also, uh, independent link to jurisdiction because you can't vote for an app that's not about the topic. Uh, second standard is real world. 90% of real world decision making is an implementation. Elmore. Analysis of policy matters very little if the mechanism for implementing those choices is poorly understood and answering what percentage of the work of achieving a desired governmental action is done it was about 10%, leaving the remaining 90% in the realm of implementation, end quote. Real world controls the internal link into other types of education and ensures that the skills we're taught can actually be used. Also ensures that debate is not an intellectually masturbatory activity where we're actually, and we're being focused, uh, forced to actually discuss practical solutions that can be implemented in the real world, third standard of resolvability. Underneath your interpretation, the entire debate becomes a standards debate where the contention is entirely rel irrelevant. However, this debate becomes entirely re resolvable as there are too many arguments to weigh under when there are multiple philosophical justifications with weighing underneath them that each sufficiently justifies an ethical theory. It becomes inherently difficult to determine which justifications comes first. That arguments are insufficiently imp impacted. This is especially true in the context of this debate where uh, each of your claims on the contention level independently link back to your burden structure. We don't know which one comes first. We don't know what happens if I'm turning one of them and you're uh, winning the other one. There's no inherent um, weighing mechanism the way it would be on the usual debate. Resolvability key to fairness because it determines whether or not arguments affect the ballot. Real quick, jump back up to real world education. It's key type of education because it ensures that the knowledge that we're gaining from debate is something that is applicable when we live our day in, day out lives once we leave the activity. Now, the fourth standard is topic education. Underneath your interpretation, you make the implementation of particular policies or the ways that they are used irrelevant. You move arguments about the uh, efficacy of whether or not we would actually implement uh, uh, autonomous medical decisions, which is important as a controversy about meta analysis and accuracies of conclusions uh, proves, especially on the abortion debate and on the euthanasia debate, even if you talk about the philosophy behind those theories, that's bad because they abstract us from learning about how the programs actually works and focuses on more remote issues, but for impacts to topic education is the only thing that we won't discuss after the topic ends. However, we'll still have plenty of uh, nail bomb debates. Further topic education is key to fairness to ensure that we can effectively utilize prep. Last unit is over limits. 
I can't question whether or not your empirics actually work in the real world or leverage off against your interpretation. You deny the best. You deny me the best sides of ground to be able to question solvency and criticize the system. You'll say oh, that's okay because your half is not specific to you, but that inherent, that illustrates an inherent flaw in your one EC, which is that it depends on your framework debate. There's no reason we should arbitrarily limit all the frameworks to non-utilitarian frameworks in your world. That is a huge major uh, philosophical disadvantage as well on the uh, on the on the case debate. It's also a ground deficit uh, because I can't literally access one of the most popular ways in deciding whether. Or not we ought to do something which is net benefits so uh if you don't have any questions i think i was pretty clear in this arguments are straightforward um do you have questions yeah okay cool uh why don't we give yourself give you four minutes of prep time is that fair okay if you're following along at home uh four minutes of prep time give the speech and then compare it to partners cool Okay, so Parker has taken his prep time, and hopefully you've given your speech, and we're going to compare, um, or, well, we're not going to do it, because I'm not working with you, uh, but hopefully you're going to compare uh, how you did versus how Parker does. So, I'm ready whenever you are, buddy. Yeah, presumably you're giving a counter interp, yeah? Okay. Just, we had a lot of interactions. I thought they were really smart. They were really nice. Yeah, because it's just like, I feel like they had to do a lot to get here. Exactly. You know? Or like, they're just really well. All the way over. Yeah. Yeah. The friends are very good. Well, and also because of the, the cost. Oh. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's pretty intelligent and well. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would take a lot to, like, I don't know, go into national. Like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. Do you want to study abroad? Yeah, I guess it just depends where I would want to go. Really? Yeah. Because he's anywhere right now. If I was like, here's a ticket. Really? Just because of the food, man. Oh, come on. <laughs> I know. I just, I really love food. I'm a food. Yeah. Really? Okay, we can have fun. I like love, love, love to cook. I need to get better at cooking, but perfect. I love like you can trust me. <laughs> yeah, okay, perfect. Um yeah. Yeah. Where would you want to send your book? Um you need some programs that go to Bosnia, Serbia, and Croatia. Wow. Yeah, I think Croatia's really good. It's honestly like I'm gonna end there and like stay there for a while. I think. Um, yeah, it's the most beautiful, incredibly rich and flavored area. Just like the the actual grain. Right. You can go from desert to jungle to beach all within hours. Amazing. Yeah, it's so no awesome. And the water, honestly. Yeah, my I had a friend in high school who just always raving about Croatia and the water. <laughs> yes. He showed me pictures and I was just like, holy honestly fun. unreal. I was gonna go to the summer, but I won't go to Ireland. I was I don't know. It was beautiful, but a lot of the same stuff, which is why I think I'm probably gonna back with Croatia. Because you're at their age. Yeah, you know, if you're there for a while and you have a lot of stuff. I was there for about three weeks. No. Okay. Well, three weeks is enough. I got around though, like, because yeah. I was just like trying to see it a lot. Yeah. And so I would stay, um, I don't know, in like different cities and just bus places. Cool. Well, like different cities all around. Yeah. And we just saw a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but then after a while, I was like, okay, like, I could go for some desert. Like, <laughs> it's a lot of experience. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it was so um, What's your password? Ben. Okay, uh, one second. Okay, uh, 
So, lots of thoughts. Uh, I think that the topic literature, we're just going to start top down. Uh, so we'll start on the counter interp. Uh, counter interp is fine. Um, topic literature standard is good. I think that the reciprocity standard doesn't make a ton of sense because there's no reason why nibs and a prioris and all the strategies that make it not one-to-one -one are allowable in a world of implementation. Like presumably implementation doesn't definitionally give access uh, to the debaters who are debating underneath implementation to those strategies. So I think that's a key missing link. Like you need to explain why implementation debates allow for that to happen. Um, uh, and I, I, my personal thought is that that's just a false argument. Um, and like I, that personal thought is backed up by, you know, years of coaching and judging. Um, and so I'm not necessarily sure it's definitionally implied, but if you think it is, do you see how at least you need to explicitly say so? Okay, so I think you're wasting time on the reciprocity argument. How long did that speech take you, give you? Take, rather. Okay, yeah, so a little bit too long. So that's definitely one place we can save time. Uh, the next argument is on philosophical education. You need to explain why implementation debates would mean that you don't get that specific type of phil ed, uh, right? Because I'm also making a phil ed claim to preempt you, and I'm saying that um, in, in Ames debate, we don't have util debates anymore, which is uniquely bad. Um, so I think that maybe instead of reading phil ed as a separate standard, you can just do that on the over limits debate, and you can make it like a, just a turn. Um, I think making it its own standard gets you liable to have the 2NR really blow it up and go hard for it, because I don't think you're doing a fantastic job handling the argument that there would be no um, top, like, util debate in your world, um, right? So do you see how maybe not having the fill out standard would be good? Cool. So I would just narrow your counterinterpretation down to one standard, and then I would impact it exactly the way you impacted it. I thought that was fantastic. Okay. Now on the top. Uh, your overview is good. I think you need to impact your overview, though. Um, I would say that takes out your text standard, proves the AF is topical, because I still have fiat in my world. Like, I'm still passing a policy. I'm just not defending the consequences of that policy being passed. Does that make sense? Hello? Um, that really seems to be the biggest argument you take out with that overview. So I'm not necessarily sure what other arguments it would impact back to. Um, and so if you think there are other arguments it impacts back to, you should Im uh, explicitly impact it um, to those other arguments. But if there are no other arguments, I would just keep it specific to uh, text. Um, I would have made it as a no link. Not an I mean. I would have made it as a no link specifically on text. And then I would have said, I would have also made a no impact on jurisdiction. And I would have also said that fairness controls the link to jurisdiction. That like what is in your jurisdiction to do is what is most fair. Not what is topical. <laughs> Does that make sense? Um, cool. Uh, on real world education. I think there are like a couple of easy arguments on real world education that you're making, um, which is uh, first, there's no reason um, that that unique that ninety percent of education is uniquely valuable right now, right? Like when we become real world policymakers, we can have that ninety percent of education. So really, what you can do is draw a turn about depth. Does that make sense? Like. Uh, on real world education, I would say like, first you can play real world in policy education. You have another activity in which you can get your policy education. Additionally, you can get policy education in the real world by becoming a policymaker. It's not like every policymaker relied on LD debate to become a, a good policymaker. Second argument here is that philosophical education is probably uh, more important than real world policy education because you can get your policy education later, but this is a unique form in which we can actually discuss uh, the arguments. Third argument here is that real world education is inevitable. The very process of debating and uh, articulating an argument and then defending that argument is real world education. Fourth argument here is that there's a, a very intuitive intuitive turn, which is that you increase, um, like, you increase depth in my world because we focus only on the 10% of argumentation, uh, which the Elmore evidence says that happens uh, prior to implementation, which means that we actually get to talk about the issue more in depth, which is uniquely good because depth outweighs breadth. Does that make sense? Also, I want you to notice how I'm probably faster than you on the theory debate right now. 
that is just like probably unacceptable. Right? Like there's no reason I should be five years out of this game and still faster than you. Like that needs to change sooner rather than later. Does that make sense? And I'm not, I keep telling you this because I'm not trying to be mean, but because I, I like need you to really understand that you are not fast enough right now. Cool. Okay. Uh, on resolvability, uh, I think your empirically denied is good. I think I would also make a non-unique that like util debates are equally resolvable. Like you're making the is like I would say the interp makes the is op fallacy. You assume that just because framework debates and status quo are not resolvable that they can't be uh, in the general sense. But that same problem applies to util debates and the status quo util debates are rarely resolvable. Um, so it's a non-unique harm. Does that make sense? Cool. I didn't catch your second argument on resolvability. What was it? Okay. Yeah, I buy that. That's fine. Um, yeah, I think the resolvability claim is pretty weak. Cool. Uh, the next argument is topic lit. Uh, I think your argument, your number two, that it doesn't deny meta analyses. I would say my AF proves I'm literally citing empirical evidence from the topic literature. Right? We do that in the AF. So making an argument that my AF disproves would be pretty useful. Does that make sense? Uh, I also like your argument about this prevents janky apps. I thought that was a unique argument that uh, was well articulated. Uh, on over limiting, uh, I'm not necessarily sure you want to concede the link and say over limiting good. Uh, I would I would first say that I'm not over limiting. That there's still a ton of arguments that could still be read on the Ames debate. Right, like you could read. Sure. So it's yeah. <laughs> a question of is overlimiting comparative or is there a threshold? Like, I guess the question is, like, um, does it matter if in the world of the interp there's 20 positions you can read and in the world of the counter if there's 15 positions you read? Like, it doesn't seem like there's a huge advantage to overlimiting then. Does that make sense? Right. So uh, I would frame it as it's not a comparative standard. It's a question of, um, I, I would frame it as it's a threshold. I definitely meet that threshold. And then I would list out all the different arguments that are fair game underneath oh, Ames. Yeah. She's kind of like I would see, I would say, you can read Dayon, Contractualism, Virtue Ethics, Democracy, uh, Nail Bomb Apps, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like I would just list out a bunch of arguments and then read them, and like read it out loud, and it won't take you more than three, four seconds. No, you're saying you may defend Nail Bomb. You're not saying you must. Right, and so your point should be, your point should be that in a Ames debate, this nail bomb app isn't the only app you can defend. I see. What can you remind me? Like, what was the text of your counterinterp? I have it flowed as, "Af may defend res of morally relevant distinction about capacity," other than the Drake's card. I see. Um, I, don't know what that I don't know. I think that might be a reason why you might want to rephrase the counter interp to help you on the limits debate. Uh, 
But that's up to you. You can think about how you want to go about that process, and then we can see how your redo turns out, and we can analyze it. We can address the specific concern. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, I think also it's worth your time making an argument that there is still a util debate in my world, that it's not over limited. Um, and then I would make another argument that all the ground you don't get access to, like politics, was a terrible ground to start with. I have bites all of my likes in these cards. Oh my goodness! This was from dessert. Does that make sense? No. Yeah. I just love mosquitoes. Cool. So, if you're clear on that, um, this yeah. is your homework assignment for next time. Uh, I think we should try to, uh, like, well, real quick, are there any other questions, or is that good? Okay. Well, see, but that would invite you. Okay.